This might be the reason that your dreams are so short and this also might provide the solution. Before we get into the video, if you're new here on this channel and you're interested in lucid dreaming, do make sure you subscribe and enable all notifications because I've got hundreds of videos on lucid dreaming on this channel and I'm posting more all of the time. You can also check out my complete book, The Lucid Dream Book. There'll be a link to it in the top right hand corner or down in the description below. Use code LUCID to get 15% off at checkout. When I first started out lucid dreaming, I found one thing really, really difficult, more difficult than absolutely anything else about the process, more difficult than getting lucid, more difficult than any of the various dream control techniques like flying or spawning items or spawning characters or whatever. The one thing that I found the most difficult was actually just staying in the dream. The dream would end so quickly, so often. A lot of the time I would get in a dream and I would just look around and by the time that I actually looked around everywhere, the dream was over. And I struggled for years wondering what the problem was. I would do all of the things that people recommend. I would rub my hands together. I would spin around on the spot. I would try all of these stabilization techniques. And a lot of the time they worked, but only for a little while. And then the dream would end, you know, 10 seconds later anyway. And I wondered what the hell the problem was. When you get in a lucid dream, what does it look like? What is the first thing that you do? Does it look a little bit like this. That right there might be the reason that your dreams are so short. When we get in the lucid dream, we're often so excited. We want to look around everything. Or maybe it looks a little something like this. You're touching everything around you or you're immediately interacting with everything around you. If you're really rushing to get into the dream, that might be the issue right there. When we first get into a lucid dream or we first become lucid in an existing dream, we often get so excited that we just want to explore. We just want to look around right away. We want to interact with everything right away. We want to use a million dream control techniques right away. And that right there could be the problem, especially the part about looking around. And that's what today's video is about because this was one of the keys for me to getting longer dreams was just taking a bit more time to look around. So the way that I sort of rationalize why this works is your subconscious has to create this entire world around you. But is it creating an entire world? I would reason that it actually isn't. You see, I think our brain is doing the same thing that sophisticated computer graphics do when they're being rendered inside a game or whatever. When you're actually playing a game, and I'm talking about games that are well optimized here, not every game does this. When you're playing a game and you're wandering around through this game, the game does some clever things to try to make the best use of your graphics card and your CPU and so on. And one of the things that optimized games do is try not to render so many of the things that you're not actually seeing right now. This is why when you move around in a game, you'll often notice what's called pop-in, where basically objects will suddenly appear on the horizon because the objects weren't being rendered before and as you get closer to that area, the object actually appears. Now, obviously the better games are better at hiding this, so you don't ever notice the objects popping in because they appear far away enough that you don't see that. But the basic idea is that if something is not going to be viewed by the user playing the game, why waste resources rendering it? As long as you can get it rendered fast enough that it's going to be there by the time that they're actually looking at it or that it's, you know, in visual distance, then that's fine and that's going to save resources. So I personally believe that our brains are doing exactly the same thing when we're in a dream. They are not rendering all of the stuff that we're not looking at. They're rendering what we're seeing in front of us. So that means the stuff behind you simply isn't being created or rendered by your subconscious mind yet. So what does this have to do with how short your lucid dreams are? Well, if the first thing that you do in a lucid dream is suddenly start looking around in every direction, you're telling your brain that it now has to render all of these different scenes all around you really, really rapidly. And sometimes that's just gonna be too much and the dream is gonna destabilize and end. If you actually take a bit of time and you approach this a bit more slowly, you know, you take a moment to just take in what you're seeing in front of you first of all, and then you slowly look around, you slowly assess your surroundings, not, you know, darting around with your head, suddenly turning around, spinning in circles and all of that, then you're gonna notice that actually the dream stays a lot more stable. And I think it's exactly for the reason that I just described. And this goes for exploring too. I love exploring my different dream worlds. It's always fascinating to see where the dream's gonna take me or to create my own places as well. But if you're exploring too quickly, that's more that your subconscious has to actually create all of the time. So it's more likely that the dream will destabilize. If you're in a house right now, think about it like this. 
Something behind a closed door doesn't yet exist. Your brain hasn't yet created it or decided what's on the other side of that. This, by the way, is why I always use this in my dream control techniques. You know, if I want to spawn something, it's much better to spawn it on the other side of a door because my brain hasn't created that yet. So it doesn't have to change anything. It just has to figure out that, hey, behind that door, there's going to be that particular object. But that also means that every time I'm going through a door, my brain does have to do that. It has to create all of that new information. So if I'm rushing from door to door, from room to room, turning corner after corner, really rapidly, that's going to put more pressure on my brain to keep up with all of this data that it's having to create. And so there's a higher chance that it's just going to lose track, things are going to get a bit blurry, a bit swishy, and the dream is basically going to end. I actually have the suspicion that that might be the root cause of the various dream stabilization techniques actually working as well. I think it's less the sensory information that you're getting from, you know, touching objects or rubbing your hands together, and more the fact that you just stop to do that. You pause for a minute and you're all focused on your hands, you're not looking around, darting around everywhere and doing a million things, you're just focused on one thing, your hands. And often you're looking at your hands as well, so your brain is just focused on creating these two very simple objects, your hands that you're very familiar with, you see them every day of your life. It's not like it has to remember anything about how they look because you are intimately familiar with how your own hands look. So when you're doing that and when you do focus in on that, that's how it helps stabilise, in my opinion anyway. So try this out, if you've been struggling with short lucid dreams, this might just be the key. Move around a little bit slower, go through doors a little bit slower, stop turning around so much and diving behind every corner and exploring every new nook and cranny of the dream that you're in. Take things just that little bit slower and if you do find things destabilizing, rather than necessarily focusing on you know spinning and touching and all of this, just focus on staying centered on one point. You can even just look at one point in front of you and try not to move your eyes or just bring your hands up to your face and just look at your hands and nothing else and you may find that that really helps. Now I hope you found this helpful and enjoyed the video. Make sure you subscribe and enable all notifications so you can stay up to date when my new videos come out and if you want to keep watching check out one of the videos on screen, go watch that and I'll see you there soon. Take care.